There is this group of young travelers living out of their cars and vans, some as young as 18 and others in their early 20s that have been getting millions of views and hundreds of thousands of followers for their lifestyle and cinematic clips. I spent the last two months of winter following them as they chase this endless summer down the California coast. Like so many of the people that were constantly approaching them and knew every person of the group, I wanted to know more. Beyond the aesthetic clips where they captured what it felt like to be young and free and the pack drops of some of the most beautiful scenery that the world has. I was able to experience what it was like to travel with them, understand their approach to life and how this was even all possible. So the landscape of vehicle dwelling has entirely changed from You're gonna end up eating a steady diet of government cheese and living in a van down by the river to Here's a quick 60 second tour of our latest dark build in Miss Sprinter Van Creating not only an entire internet niche but also a stereotype that you are a bum while somehow simultaneously also being extremely wealthy. But what drew me most to these guys wasn't the builds that they had, but the life that they lived out of the vehicles that they inhabited. It just felt like the Pinterest and Tumblr images that I dreamed of as a teenager, just longing to travel alongside a group of friends. And after seeing one guy do it out of a car, I just decided that there wasn't any more excuses. These were the memories that I wanted to make. Thanks to whatever fate, universal magic, god, or pure coincidences out there, I met Alex Rogers over the summer in a parking lot where I immediately recognized his van. And getting to go on a trip in person instead of watching it through a screen was an opportunity that I was not going to pass up. And now I got to have the experiences that I always wanted. So plans aren't extremely popular in the group, but the rough idea was to meet up in Needles and then caravan as far north as we could get on Highway 1 in Big Sur and then ending up in Santa Barbara, and more specifically, the college town of Isla Vista. Here, there were more bikes than people, countless vans parked along the street, ignoring the size restrictions, tons of young, active people outside, a nationally ranked party scene, and lots of funny names like the sunset pilgrims that gathered every night or the popular hangout spot. The lizard mouth today, otherwise known as the lizard gizzard, otherwise known as the butthole. Let me show you why. Follow me. Follow me. Check this thing out. We need a we need a zoom in. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's the butthole. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> that's why it's called that. I didn't know that. Yeah, now you know. What started as a two-week trip turned into two months, which is the exact amount of time it took me to sit down with each one for more than two seconds and have any type of a serious conversation. The friend group is hilarious, but I feel bad for like people that like meet us for the first time. I don't know. We're some cool ass people. <laughs> We're some cool ass people. I don't know. I, I find it hard to like admit to being cool, mm. but like we're some we're some pretty rad people. Wait, pause. Okay, so who are some of these people again? Charlie. He's somebody new. That Charlie. We up. yeah. We just met Charlie. The way I vision him is like Matthew McConaughey and Dazed and Confused. Like yeah, just the coolest guy ever. And I don't know, like Big Brother vibes for sure. Okay, for Charlie. Charlie. Charlie, dude. I would just, just chill. I mean, he's I, like. Santa Barbara and Isla Vista person. <laughs> exactly, dude, yeah. John, oh, dude, it's so last minute. And dude will just drive anywhere at like any time, too. He was telling me one time, he's like, yeah, bro, I gotta be in like, uh, Yosemite by like tomorrow. I'm like, bro, wh why are you not driving now? He's like, nah. Like, I'll just drive all at nighttime. I'm like, bro, we're in Washington. Like, this is like a 12 hour drive. He'd be driving. He'd be, He'd driving, be driving for <laughs> real. <laughs> John's taking a pee. The dinosaur, the giraffe, <laughs> my boy. The flirt, he's a flirt. Yeah. The biggest flirt in the group. Um, gets all the girls. Bro gets all the females. 
I don't know if you're gonna put this in. Yeah. He gets every shoddy. It's nuts. But it's like <laughs> all the old ladies. All the old ladies. We're in Cambria hunting, dude. Just we literally got like the group of ladies went past us and was like, "Yo, we love what you guys are doing. Live young." They definitely were hippies back then. But uh, then Caden's like, they left for five minutes. And then Caden went up and just started rizzing them. And we we're like, "Bro, Caden, you were, like, where'd you go?" We saw him like. Eight women, like old eight grandmas, just like talking to you, making them all laugh. They're like Caden, bro, what the heck? But Caden's really sweet. I literally bought three double doubles this morning and ate two and then brought one because I was thinking ahead. And I didn't want to make lunch. And here we are. No, bro, I 100% played Joe for the third grade. Oh, fuck! I thought he was like one of the coolest dudes ever when I first met him. He was in a in a band. He wore like the coolest freaking clothes ever. Yeah. And I was like, I want to be like this guy. Um, and so and a big lesson I think I've learned from him is just to just go for stuff. I mean, he when he's in a band now with the Moss and when he was in like high school, he just reached out to the Moss and just went for it. It's like, hey, can I film you guys? He ended up filming them and then now he's the bass player. They're yeah. like the Moss and they're like the coolest band ever. Just by being in the world, some people stick with you and teach you important lessons about life. When asking about this effect, these two people stuck out to everyone. I feel like Caleb and Rogers are like the main people. So like them. They're just doing what they want to do, you know? And like, I feel like everyone like inspi like is inspired by them. <laughs> Rogers definitely taught me to just be myself in certain yeah. things. To like, um, like when I, when I want to do something, just do it in my own way, not, not in the way that you want other people to think. But I think Rod, Rod is so awesome with like, don't care what people think, because he just does yeah. what he does, and it's freaking sick. <laughs> help! 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 I agree with what you said about Raj. Yeah. yeah I, I look up to the fact that he's unapologetically himself. Yeah. I think we can all learn from that. Yeah. And I think Caleb too. Mm -hmm. Caleb is unapologetically himself. And he wears some fun fits that I would not have fits. the guts to wear. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Caleb's definitely taught me some lessons. Well, you just gotta fucking just push. Holy shit, bro. Actually, I was not ready for you doing that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Caden to the rescue. Oh, is it that? Is it ever that deep, bro? I'm trying to get down. Yeah, I know. What route did he take? He's taught me just to like, he says this thing, it's all mental. Alex, it's all mental. It's mental. He's a very positive guy I'd say in, in pretty in bad situations so yeah. I've learned to just uh, <laughs> kind of look at things in the best way glass half full sort of thing I guess yeah. and then when I turned around you're like a mile away and I was yeah. like are you good bro and that's when you're like <laughs> 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 I was like oh he's not good like what just happened <laughs> I had a moment in my mind like bro I'm not baking yet. <laughs> Can't wait to get shots. I'm yeah. so if I was in a stressful situation and I needed someone's help, like Broji is the guy to go to because he can just handle his, like he can get through a tough situation really well. And I, I don't know, I just admire that yeah. about Broji. Just being around him, you're pretty much guaranteed to laugh. What's going on, bro? He comes up with the funniest phrases like Greasy Grove. He's just really funny, and he like kind of put us all onto this lingo that we all kind of. Uh use all the time now and it's just yeah. like it makes it makes it way more fun around all of us i think yeah. a lot of people have been picking up my lingo i'm not gonna lie my lingo has been like a big thing in the friend group it's kind of funny i've been seeing it with the side eye i've been hearing a couple of people saying my words but i swear every single time we see you guys there's a different word and like you're saying you should make a glossary or something you got to give me a, a definition of cooked and factory okay Cooked in factory. But the definition of cooked, I'd say it's, uh, what is cooked? That's a good question. If you're cooked, it's like, yo, you're over with. Oh, buddy, she's cooked. Like, let's say, going down the highway, you hear the craziest noise. Oh, buddy, you're cooked. You're cooked? Just with Kayla putting the edge at the end of everything, like, oh, the dippage. <laughs> Or, how would you say? The whippage. The whippage. Yeah. I, like, I like that. So I guess not sayings, but just adding that yeah. to the end of every single word. But edge is basically like, I don't know where edge even came from. I think I said that like a couple times. And I was yeah. like, 
yo, everybody's like, bro, let's go get some footage. I'm like, but that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> like, where does that come from? Out of all the words, I think I had a personal favorite that's birth was a byproduct of all the home on wheels that we had. Um, uh, factory. So, when things come out of the factory, that's just like how they are brand new. Yeah. So, for example, follow me. Follow me. I'm gonna give you a little example. Um, this right here, this dent, she's factory, okay? Game like that, you know, we don't talk about it. I'll show you what's factory. So, see this? Come back here. This noise right here? Is not factory. That's not factory. I'll tell you. Factory. Oh, that's factory. Oh, we have like a lot of old cars in the uh, in the the friend group, so like it's pretty funny. Like so there's usually always somebody having a problem. Dude, you just can't turn it over. I think we gotta take this car. Yeah. Fucking not factory. My car is not car. Fucking hey, bro. This piece of shit mechanic. I tell you what. Fucking bad. Chucks vans. Give me up for all your brake light needs. My whole life wanted to be driving down the California coast in a caravan <laughs> <laughs> with a bunch of people I like. <laughs> and then we, 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 I don't know, living out of childhood fantasy super super fun it does feel like life is a fantasy now kind of does <laughs> but that's because like everyone tells you that this has to be a fantasy you scroll through social media and you're like they're having the best time in the world you know they're living the, the dream life mm -hmm. and in a way I really just wanted to be like that and like yeah I thought I saw myself doing that and like not Ready? just sitting at home in my hometown kind of staying put doing the same thing over and over I wanted to experience new and when you're out here everything is new every day is something new new people new food depending where you are yeah, new yeah. new everything all right now i know i'm living my dream life it's what yeah. if i go back to like my 15 year old self and ask myself what are you doing right now i'd be like holy shit this is crazy like i'm actually doing this this is yeah like i'm making a decent living doing exactly what i want to do with the people yeah. i want to do where i want to do it it's just it's honestly insane what does it feel like to kind of like be able to live that dream and like for everything to be a reality? Insane. Sometimes I'll just be sitting in the back of my van like, dude, this is the exact things I used to dream yeah. of. Or like, I'll just be literally like cooking a meal in the back of my van. I'll look around and be like, wow, this is literally everything my 17 year old self would have wanted. And like, yeah. I don't know, I'm blessed for sure to be doing this. Like, does it live up to the expectation? Yeah, 100% for me. There are some things that people don't see, like little struggles here and there, living in a small space, but at the end of the day, we're sitting on bluffs right now, <laughs> so far from home, just yeah. enjoying the weather, and you know, it's really not bad at all. It's not often that you talk to somebody living their dream life. Dreams normally stay in our head, or they're a wish for the future, not your current life, especially for many 18 or 20 year olds. Some never get to experience them, and sometimes even when they're achieved, they can fall short. It's one of the things that made them seem like they were living in an entirely different reality. So many of us are always wanting more and more to be somewhere different, but how do we get to a point where we don't want to be doing anything than what we are? But that answer is also different for everyone. Yeah, I mean, it was hard with, like, people at school. I was still in high school when I was doing it, and I was kind of getting not hate for it, but you know, people, I could just tell it wasn't what everyone, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. This is like, yeah. so awesome what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, I guess other people don't really think like that. Like if I can get over the fact that girls are scared of me in my van, yeah. <laughs> Got out of my van the other day and I, I just poke my head out and there's a girl jogging down the road, makes eye contact with me and turns around. Yeah. I was like, dog, are you serious? Is it that bad? Coming from a background of just solely academics was so, suffocating you know like especially being surrounded by such a big like nature oriented world like my school is very academic and college oriented and it made it feel wrong for me to you know not want to pursue college like I was like failing 
my whole class. But on, on the other side, I, man, I, I just wanted to prove them wrong. <laughs> you know, I wanted to tell them that that's not the only path. And the definition of success is not always, you know, generating a load of wealth and becoming super high on the social ladder. Kind of a piece of American culture is hardworking, hardworking class and proving yourself to the people on the block that you're the hardest worker and that you have the most money. And yeah. I don't know, that's just like, ever since I was born, the word success has been correlated with money, has been correlated with a big house, has been correlated with a successful family. But like, I don't know, that's just not success to me. Success is more when you are feeling extremely content in life. Like there's just nothing that could stop your flow. That's yeah. exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm so content with it right now. And even you bringing up the question like puts me at ease that I'm just, that's I'm so content with mm. what I'm doing. It's one of the, the coolest feelings ever, honestly. With a group of 15 traveling together from all around the country, you might wonder how everyone is connected or where they all met. It is a bit complex, but it all came down to two main methods. How did you meet everybody? Oh, Instagram group? DM, yo. Honestly, it's crazy, but I've found like almost all my friends from social media. Like the only person I met um, was Broji in person. And we, me and him kind of hit it off and started like contacting people. Now we have a huge group. It's a fat friend, actually, now that I think about it. It's like 15 people now. Yo, get the burger bell on video, ready? Yeah. Is this videoing? This is the burger bell. See, so this is how you wrangle a squad of 13. Burgers! Burgers! Let's go! Okay, let's go on. It's time! <laughs> it's working. All right, three, I feel two, like a, a sheep's one. dog. Right? Burgers! Burgers! Yeah, we were all starting off. We were all on the road. Saw a couple of videos from Caden Jackson. And like he had like a cinema camera, like a black magic. And then I saw a couple of his videos. And I was like, bro! I love like your videos, blah, blah, blah. I kind of have like my own videos going on. We should definitely meet up if you had the time. Like I didn't put no pressure or anything. Like I didn't say like, yo, we should meet up here. I was like, if there's an opportunity to meet up, I'd love to. And then basically from that DM, he was like, yo, I'm back from Europe. Uh, where are you at? <laughs> and then I was in the Tetons. I was uh, the Grand Tetons, if y'all know where that's at. And like, and they were in Flagstaff. And I think it was like, 15, 17 hour drive. I literally, when I saw him, he's like, yo, I'm in Flagstaff. I literally started my whip up and I drove straight there. I didn't even get food. I was like, yo, I'm there. I need to see these people. I was only gonna be there for like two days. And then I was living like a month yeah. in Flag. And then that was, dude, those memories are so lit. So I was riding my bike to go check the surf. And then there's this group of guys just posted up behind the truck. I'm like, man, make eye contact with them. These guys look familiar. Didn't say anything though, keep biking. And then on the way back from checking the surf, I make eye contact with this guy again. And then I'm finally like, you know what? I'm gonna talk to these guys. I feel like I recognize these dudes. And that was Raj. All it takes is one person to, to meet yeah. a whole group of caravanners, you know? And half the friends now, we've met like in parking lots. Well, Zoe, we met in the Washington, like in a parking lot. We met, um... Raj and Caleb on the side of the road in Monterey, California, and we walked past the van. I go ask them about the van. I don't know if I should. And then when we were walking back to the car, I was like, I'm just gonna go ask them about it. But she was like walking by. She's like, Oh, we like your van. And then Rogers is like, Yo, thanks. And then we're like, Let's go bowling tonight. And then we just went bowling. And then now we've been cool ever since. How do you meet people? I don't know. I feel like on the they road. Just show up. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, it clicks a lot easier than than people like for me like in my hometown and at college because you have this shared interest that's so strong mm -hmm. throughout everybody and yeah. I just feel like it immediately clicks yeah. like there's no like awkward like force like hey how are you like what do you do Not it's just like it's the there college, like, yeah what's, what's, your, what's major? your major you know what was your life like before for everybody out here like you're in it. <laughs> While some of us can find it hard to see our friends who live on the other side of town, it almost felt utopian to find people who'd driven thousands of miles together and continuously saw each other in new locations. You'd probably assume that they have years of history. This might seem unique, but oftentimes you'll find human connection like this in national parks and hostels around the world. But does it suck not having deep relationships? I don't, th I, okay, see, 
I honestly personally feel like my relationships on the road are deeper. They're, they're like every other group of travelers I run into. You know, you're like so comfortable with each other after like, you know, pretty much living together for so long um, that it's pretty much like you're just family. And I think that's been really cool. They kind of become your family, even though you meet these people for such short amount of times. And I feel like we get to know you guys so well and spend all this time with you. And Start off where you left off. Like we haven't seen everyone, well, most of you guys for like four months now. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like that much time has gone mm. by. It feels like you're just back in it. I feel like that's just kind of how traveling is. I feel like traveling is just that microcosm of you just like spend so much time with the people you travel with and you become friends so much faster than normal. So yeah, it's kind of crazy how I feel like with you and all these guys that we've already been friends for a long time when we've been hanging out for what, like 10 days? <laughs> Man, it's, it's really fun to have like a big group now. I totally get it now of why you guys do it, like travel in these big groups and go all around. I think the biggest factor for each one's own success ironically came from each other. Not competition and comparison, but inspiration and the sharing of skills and tools to grow alongside one another. You can't meet amazing people, that, that just happens, like you can't force that. And I think that's a huge thing because I'm surrounding myself with like some of the coolest people I know and that's striving me to keep pushing forward and so if, without meeting those people, like without meeting Alex, without meeting Caleb, without meeting Kaden, like all these people, I don't think... I would be here where I am right now. I was just making phone videos for a long, long time, like over a year. And then um, Broji and Caden Jackson had, Caden Jackson had a black magic camera, but Broji was just teaching me all about cameras at the time and like telling me, just like showing me his videos and it just like inspired me. I was like, oh, I wanna one day do this, but I didn't have the money for a camera at the time, so I would just use friends, you know. Mm -hmm. Caleb would let me use his here and there, or Broji would always let me use his, like the black magic and stuff, and we would go out and shoot, and then I eventually got enough money to buy one. A little three month period where I was like, why am I even traveling? Like, what's, what's the purpose behind this? Mm -hmm. And then um, as I got more into cameras and stuff, it kind of like, gave me my purpose okay. like now I combine my travels with my photography and stuff and it's like this double whammy of yeah. passion the best memory I'd say is just when there was like what 14 of us on the road at once when we yeah. all kind of piled into John's van yeah and uh, went down like the the highway there and kind of just shot and had a good time um, rode the longboards down that was super fun um, there's so many little things that just kind of lead to, to big big things, I guess. So. Mm. Up at Ragged Point was really cool was and we just all had our cars and I don't know, something about the little moments where all our cars are tucked together at camp and you wake up and just hop out of your car, everyone's like cooking breakfast and stuff. <laughs> oh, it's fucking whoa, hot! Whoa, whoa. Just oh. asked, is it hot? Come on, you said it's a little nippy or something. <laughs> Y'all stink. <laughs> haven't showered in days. <laughs> Close your eyes, I'll be here in the morning. Favorite memories was last week when we went to, I showed everyone my secret surf spot. Mm. And we just went there and just laid in the grass. Yeah. For like five hours. Just laid there, played guitar, hung out. I didn't realize how much I needed that <laughs> to, you know, find a group of people who are down to just go to a place just to go. I don't know, just seeing everybody again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I liked when we pulled up to the coffee shop. Yeah. When Zoe was super excited. Yeah. And we kind of surprised her a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. In this park, we we're not definitely weren't supposed to sleep over there yeah. over the night, but we did. But we were at this park and like we had like 15 cars, we were all parked up, and then we were just like in the field, like playing like we were kids. We were doing like foot races. I mean, I won it all. If, if you have all the videos of me burning everybody, y'all see, I'm pretty fast. It was just like a sense of community. Like, we'd all eat together. We'd have this huge uh, fire pit. It was so random. I had a grill on it and everything. And we all ate together there. And then we just listened to music, cracked jokes. Like, that was so fun. And then we went into the city the next day. And then we just went out and thrifted. And, like, everybody just was having a good time. That was really fun. 
one particular event stood out and was mentioned over and over that just kind of embodies one of the major themes of the group. It was so infectious that the memory is shared with a ton of other strangers who came up to join us. Favorite event from this trip? Yeah. That kickball game was so fun, dude. So fun. I love that kickball game. Um, the kickball definitely comes to mind. My favorite memory was um, when we played kickball in the field. That yeah. was awesome. We just, I would say that's probably mine too. We just had so much fun. And just doing random stuff like that kind of brings out your inner child again, which is yeah. really nice. And uh, I feel like growing up and just realizing how much fun you can have doing so many simple things and that life doesn't have to be so extravagant you know is the best part about it like yeah I we have a nice van and everything like that and we have all these nice things but honestly I feel like the best times that I've had with everybody is just when we do the most simple stuff we bought you know a, a five dollar ball at Walmart and some five dollar cones and we just played kickball for two hours and that was probably the most fun I've had in such a long time exactly everyone was laughing and having a good time that's what I like being around people that are like that just make you feel like a little kid where you can just run around and goof off and stuff it's my favorite thing definitely cuts in a child sometimes too much kind of feels like PE class in elementary school yeah, that is <laughs> where you're just kind of yeah. all there and you're like around. might as well have fun while we're here right yeah it makes you feel like a kid again you know you, you feel like, like a kid when you're on this when oh, you're absolutely. on the trip thousand percent I feel like you don't have any responsibilities I feel like every day-to-day -day life, you forget that you have free will, if that makes sense. Yeah. But I feel like when you're on this trip, you have free will. You can just do what you want. You don't have to, you're not restricted by anything. So I think that's what makes it amazing. I think that's what makes it cool. I think the biggest thing that I've learned from just traveling with everybody is um, how to just be young again and how to, you know, I'm not even that old, but I feel like my life since going into college has always been so serious and kind of strict and, you know, working towards one goal, but, um, but I feel like just learning how to find pleasure in simple things where you can just be, you know, hang out with everybody and recognize that, you know, my life is really good and the place I'm at. Now for the most common question. How do you make your money? Trust Daddy's fine. money. Must be nice you to know their rich. dad works at Raytheon. paying for that? Your unemployed There's friend. There's no way to make money. Get a Why don't you can do something to society? Have you do a board of funders? I don't know. I can't do a board of funders. Most of the others had normal lives. Brandon and Guy going to school. Kai, Zoe, and Nick working as baristas. And even Charlie is a scientist. I had to figure out, you know, like, how I should make money, which surprisingly worked out. Something that I want to share with people is how easy it is to do van life um, and have a regular, you know, nine to five or grown up job. Yeah. Because it's worked out for me and I'm able to save a lot of money at the same time. While we were here, John got sponsored by Polo, Broji, the Weather Channel, and we even got to go on a Sunset Catamaran tour Rogers was filming for a guide company. These weren't your typical vagabonds of the past, but a product from a unique point in history that's just never happened, where you can fly or drive to almost anywhere in the world for a few thousand dollars and be able to make that money on the internet. Travel's become more accessible than ever. But, you know, it's probably just a trust fund. Speaking of sponsors, that brings us to this videos. A dream partner of any van lifer or avid camper, Jackery. Why? Because they solve an issue a lot of us have and a question a lot of you also might be wondering, how do we get electricity? The Jackery power station is a thing that's probably used most in my van. A lot of electrical systems can be complicated, but because they have a focus on sustainable energy, it was super easy to put some solar panels up that just plug in and keep me constantly charged, even though I'm always running a fridge, cooking appliances, lights, and charging my phone and laptop. If you do get inspired to load up your car and go out on a weekend trip, I highly recommend them. And if you do check them out, they've even lowered their prices on their solar generators this month. And I've also got an affiliate link, which helps me out a ton since I live in a van. In honor of Earth Month, they've helped make the documentation of this story and how they're exploring possible. Looking back on everything, now that I've had a chance to experience it myself, did I find out what the magic was behind all of this that captivated millions of people? 
I actually don't think it was the lifestyle or the location scouting, but what I think that we all want, the ultimate freedom. Not only knowing ourselves, but not holding back. If living out of a car has taught me anything, it's that if you can overcome the judgment of it, the world opens up. And that there are others out there you'll find that are just as crazy and different as you are. I think it's hard to say what it means to live a full life because, well, everyone's going to have a different response. But so often we try to copy each other's answers without realizing we just have different questions. But I at least have my answer to one. What would you do if you never grew up? And now, to my teenage self, because I know how much you needed to hear this. Some of the dreams that you had are now memories, and they're photos up on your wall. You left your hometown, and you got the travel friends that you always wanted. We did it. Oh, I'm wildin' for leaving my... Yeah, that's another word, wildin'. My laptop's just chillin' there. Woo! That was fun. A lot of my lingo, I don't know. Yeah, my... where does the lingo come from? My friend Dev.